Craft Warehouse followers. Happy Wednesday. Um, before I get started again, I'm just going to make sure my video is up and running and that you guys can hear me okay. Okay. So it looks like the video is up and going. I hope everyone's having a really, really good day. Um, I'm just going to kind of go over some of the things that we're going to be using today. So I, of course, I got my hot glue gun plugged in because you're going to need a hot glue gun for this. But um, I have some of my macrame cord. I have a six millimeter here today for, for this project. Um, and then I do have a, oops, just a felt square that we'll be using. Um, so we'll end up wrapping our macrame and then we'll glue it to the back side. So it just holds it all together nicely. And then I do have wood beads to go ahead and create a fun little hanger, which is completely optional. Um, you don't even have to do that if you don't want to. But then I got some fun yarn. I have these fun five colors. So I have like a gray, kind of a denim color, um, I guess an aqua and a pink and a cream. Again, colors are completely optional, totally your choice. Um, I am going to just show kind of getting one of these started for wrapping um, since it does take a while to wrap the yarn around the um, macrame itself. I won't be able to show the whole process, but I do have, I can show you how to get started and you just continue wrapping every color the same way. So first things first is I'm going to cut three of these and that's going to be for one. I got to get my measuring tape here. I believe I did about 33 inches. So I'm going to measure out to about 33 inches. And then I am going to cut that. And then I'm going to do three more strands that are 33. And I just kind of eyeball it because I will straighten everything out in the end. So I got my three here. All right. Now I am going to go ahead and tape off one of my ends. I'll make sure all, all three strands are nicely lined up. And then it comes down to preference on this part. So this part that I'm going to tape off, it'll end up being the end. Um, I like to have about probably five inches. I can either measure it or I just eyeball it. So I got some masking tape here. And I just kind of eyeball how much I'd like. And then I wrap the masking tape around all three macrame cords. Again, this is a six millimeter. These are gonna become, they're gonna be chunkier uh, stripes for your colors, but you could use a smaller four millimeter as well. So now we're just gonna go ahead and get started on wrapping this yarn. So I get my end, I start with my outer color first. And I just tie a knot, just like a shoe, a shoe tie, right? Just two of those. I leave a little extra and I'll trim off at the end. So I start off by tying it and then you're just going to wrap the yarn side by side all the way around. So this is what I'm talking about is like time, the more time consuming part. Um, I believe it took me to do the whole rainbow like this and I do have a thinner yarn so it might if you choose some other yarn that will also determine how how long it'll take but this is a thinner yarn and it probably took me like a Marvel movie I think that's what I was watching when I did it so you'll just wrap I tend to since this is tied off over here I tend to spin this end that has a tape and just keep going around using my finger guiding it. If you do get any holes 
all you have to do is kind of push the strings and then you just keep going and again you'll do that all the way to the end on your very first one well not all the way to the end you'll leave about again five six inches whatever you are gonna end up leaving so I just keep keep wrapping I'm gonna do it so you guys can see that I have some gaps and then how to fix that so give me a second here so I just keep wrapping Oops. Make sure your tail isn't getting all tangled like mine is here. So see how it's got all that space? I just pull it down and it's fixed. And then you can just keep on going. So it doesn't have to be perfect on your first try around. It does help, but you can easily tighten all those gaps up. Um, another thing I find when I am twisting this on is whatever side that you have your tail end on that's not taped, make sure you have your yarn on the opposite side. So you're just going to, it won't get tangled in that tail and you can just keep spinning away. Again, I'm not going to end up finishing all this just because this is time consuming and <laughs> You can watch me twist yarn all day, right? But as you can tell, super easy to do. It does kind of squish the cording up a little bit, making it just a little bit tighter, but that is okay. So I'm going to go ahead and bring those finished ends over. So again, finish it all the way to the end. I didn't have, I finished a little bit more than the other side, so I am going to have smaller endings. But I did just tie the same knot. So you're just going to do that shoelace tie and tie it double knot. Nothing fancy there. So I did that on all of these. I do find it easiest when you're wrapping this um, to go ahead, tape off the one side, and just wrap all the way to the end. And then once you get to this part, you can kind of squish up any fabric or yarn you need to and make everything fit nicely. So now that we're at this point, what you want to do is get your felt piece. I make sure I have that taped right where it starts going up. I want that where the yarn and the tape is to be lined up right on the edge. And then I'm going to line this end right up on the edge and then I'll come in with my next color doing the same thing. As you can tell while I'm putting these all here, they all have that same tape in that same corner. See the gray is a little bit longer here, so I'm just going to kind of squish it up a little. Make it nice and tight. Going to come in with that lighter blue. And again, this side that I finish on, it does not have any tape. You just want to go ahead, wrap it all the way to the end. Sometimes I'll even leave the yarn there in case I need more. Um, but it's not necessary because you can spread out the yarn a little bit on the macrame. So lining the taped part. I'm just making sure everything is about the length I need and then my cream color. Okay. Now, if these are too small of color strips for you, you could always add another um, strand of macrame and that's gonna give you a fatter little color. Now from here, I can either go ahead and just hot glue it on or I can go ahead and trace this um, kind of giving me an outline of where I need to cut. Oh, 
Okay, I'm just going to outline this, and then I'm going to cut my, my felt piece. So again, just having this felt on the back side, this is what's going to really hold those pieces together so that it's a no-sew um, project and really anybody could do it. If you didn't want to see the back side of this, I would suggest going ahead wrapping some more colors and just having them right on the back so it could be double sided. So again, just cutting all that excess off. Such an easy project, you guys. Okay, so we got that outside layer done. Then we're just gonna cut that inside one. I might have to do some touching up, um, but it'll get me my basic outline. Okay. Okay, so now before I start, gluing my strips of color on for the rainbows. I do like to go ahead and glue down my beads, uh, my little loop for my bead hanger. So I have some smaller string here and I'm going to put probably about 16 of these large whole wood beads on here because I want a decent size hanger. I also like to go with even numbers when I do my hangers because sometimes you get that awkward bead that just kind of flops around on hooks and nails and it never seems to sit right. So if I do an even number of these beads, my nail won't sit right there. It would sit right in the middle of them. And you could do as many or little beads as you want to. Okay, two more. Okay. Now, I'll glue this on first. Let me cut it off. So I'm going to tie a knot on this, just so I know that's not coming undone on me. And then I'll end up hot gluing it right in there. So just going to do a couple lines of hot glue. And I'm going to set my string right in there. And then when I go and put my colors over it, it's going to hide it. It will also make sure that it's just extra secure. Okay, so we're going to come in with these colors now. And I'm going to go ahead and just... I'm going to go all the way around on it. You could definitely go by sections. It just is a preference here. I'm going pretty quick with hot glue gun, so nothing's drying too quickly on me. And then I just go right along the edge. Oops, sorry you guys. Right along the edge here. All right, so I got my first color down. And then I'll just do my next color. I'll also put a little bit of hot glue on the inside when I do this. So I will probably do this next color in sections um, just so that I can also be getting some of the glue on the side of the one next to it. And then up on the edge. Again, making sure that those ends are nicely lined up.
getting on the edge in between. It just tends to look a little bit nicer when it's nice and hung, when it's hung up when you put a little glue in between the two colored strands. Otherwise I have, on my first one, I did have some gaps when I didn't do that, so. Okay, on the edge. And then just pop it right into place. Okay. And then we go to the next color. And just repeat the process every time. On the edge and the inside. We just don't want to have this moving around on us, so we want to make sure it's as secure as it can be. Such a simple project, you guys, and it's so cute hung up. Um, I know that I made one for one of my friend's little kid, and it just brings a little smile into your face when you walk into a room. It's got some fun colors and that nice trendy um, oblong rainbow shape. The best thing too is these don't have to be those traditional colors. You can end up having them be any color you want. It's whatever speaks to you. Maybe you want all blue, maybe you want all pink. Okay, so we're gonna come in with that pink color. It looks like, oops, my hot glue fell out. It looks like I'm gonna have a little extra felt to cut off, but that's okay. Lining everything up. Just gluing it right on in there, getting it nice and snug. I believe I need about two glue sticks on this project, um, just for those at home who might be doing this project. You might have to get yourself some glue sticks. Okay, so last color here, and then we'll show you how the change the bottom and get everything nice and trimmed up. Okay, all the way. Get it all the way around here, get it on the bottom. Don't want it moving around on us. Okay, so it's nice and tight. As you guys can see, I do have a little bit here that I need to trim and I can just come in with my scissors and trim that right up. It's not difficult at all. One thing too that I love about the felt in the back of this is if you have it up against a wall, it's not going to be scratching your wall either. It has a nice flat base. Okay, so now I'm just going to take all of that masking tape off that was holding my strands together at the very beginning and help me line everything up. You might need scissors. Um, usually they can come right off though. And then we'll show you how to fray the ends here. Okay, 
almost there you guys Sean does not want to come off. I used more masking tape than I needed to on most of these, so that's also a little bit of my problem. You don't need very much to wrap around this macrame. Okay. We are done getting everything off there. Oops, I got a little bit more. And again, I just take those scissors and I'll snip right in there. It's not really sticking to the macrame. My tape is sticking to itself. Um, just for those at home who are like, ah. So from here, I like to make sure all my knots are still nice and secure, and I do put a little dab of glue, making sure they're nice and secured and they're not gonna be moving. And then from there, I just snip off the ends. So making sure everything has a little, little dab of glue so that they're not moving, not opening on you, and snipping the ends off. last little spot on this side and then I will go ahead and finish the other side over here. So you want to make sure you're getting each side otherwise you might have some ends that come off on you. Just help secure everything just a tad, right? never go wrong with a little extra security so your stuff isn't unraveling. Okay. So from here, all you have to do when you're fraying any of your macrame is I just start from the ends and pull and unravel all of that. And you'll do that with each strand. Or you can leave it how it is. Maybe you don't want it to go all the way up. You don't even have to go all the way up. I just really prefer how it looks going all the way to the top. And then after I get it all the way, everything all on frayed, I will trim up my ends, making sure both sides are even. So this will take a little bit of time, you guys, if you're at home doing this, but nothing compared to wrapping all the yarn around your rainbows or your macrame to make your colorful rainbow rays. And then really, once you get them undone, I'm just gonna do this one color here and then I'll bring it over to this finished one. So once you really get this unraveled, so in the, these, I think there's three strands that are wrapped together um, to make your cording. Again, this cording, I don't think I mentioned it, but it is dyeable, so if you also didn't like that cream color, you could dye it. So see here, after I've undone them, they're still kind of really, you can still see the strands, they're not super fluffy. You can just pull them apart as much as you can. Sometimes you can take your fingers through and just kind of comb it through. Um, I have seen people take an actual comb and comb through, but I just use my hands. And you're just going to pull them all apart to really get that fluffiness. I, I call it fluffiness. I don't know if that's the right term. Uh, maybe more fringy, more fringe. So 
So just pulling it all apart. And I would do that to every single one, okay? I just think it gives it a little different look um, versus just leaving them. You can leave them if you'd like. So here it is where they are all pretty much pulled and fringed out. And this is where I'd look at it and see if I need to trim up. So like the, these guys are a little bit too long here. So I just take my scissors and come in and trim. If I have any wonky angles, this is where I can straighten them all up, making sure they're nice and even. Okay. Make sure these are all brushed down and just trim it all up. Again, you're not just trimming to make the one side even. You want to make sure you're trimming so that both sides are even, you guys. And there it is. So easy. It is a little time consuming, but it's such a fun, cute project. Um, again, so trendy with that little oblong color. You could use any, or oblong shaped rainbow, sorry. You could use any colors you want. You don't even necessarily have to have a beaded um, hanger. You could just have a little macrame string to hang up um, and go from there. Now on this, I do want to remind you guys, it does have that felt on the back side. So if you're hanging it somewhere where it might be spinning, it might look cute to go ahead and do some more strands so that it's a double sided one. And you just have the one, of course, the one little beaded hook. But that would be an option I would suggest to do if you are going to have this where it's rotating because otherwise you are going to see this back side. So just go ahead and think about where you're putting it. If it's just going to hang up on a wall, it'll be perfect like this. Um, if it is rotating, I suggest doing all the colors again and, you know, hot gluing those and doing the same process on the back. It's an easy project, just is a little bit of time consuming um, and having to wrap all the yarn around um, the macrame, but so cute. Such a good gift for anybody that you know is having a little kid. Maybe your child can help make something for their room, one or the other. All right, you guys, happy crafting. Um, I really hope that you guys can post some of your guys' photos on Instagram of any rainbow things that you are doing. What, when you hear the word rainbow, what inspires you craft-wise? Um, we have a challenge going on there, so you got a chance to win some prizes if you tag us on Instagram at Craft Warehouse. Um, we just really want to get inspired by you guys since we've been so inspired by this oblong shape rainbow. All right, you guys, thank you for joining and happy crafting! Mm -hmm.